Hi everyone, it's Rachel and today I have this forest scene piece slash figurine to show you. So this creation was designed to be used as an album cover for artist Stephen Morris who contacted me back in August saying that he was creating and releasing a licensed cover album titled Forest VGM, so Forest Video Game Music, and he needed some album art created but of course didn't have the right to use copyrighted characters from video games such as like Zelda for example. He wanted something that could bring together natural looking textures with like a cute kind of style of polymer McClay and ended up finding me on YouTube when he saw the thumbnails of some of my videos which I took with a natural background like the cactus tutorial and that was the sort of vibe he was going for. Steven also saw that I had created a large figurine before being my Sanex tropical beach party figurine and wanted something in a similar scale but about like three to four times larger so with more objects and being deeper and wider. So here I'm just showing you the size comparison between the beach figurine and the forest figurine. So we ended up talking about our ideas and what the final piece was going to look like and I was also sent some images with some more specific details that he wanted me to include but overall the design was pretty flexible. The Forest VGM album is now available on iTunes which is very exciting so I'll leave a link down in the description as well as Stephen's other social media so you can check out some of his work. He also asked if from the beginning I could film the process of me making the forest scene, so that's what I'm going to show you now. I have a bunch of different clips and I'll just talk you through the process of how I made it. I started off by making the base of the scene using foil. So this is the same method that I used for my beach figurine as well for two reasons. One being that it doesn't use up unnecessary amounts of clay and two it makes the finished product a lot lighter in weight because if the base was made with just pure clay it would be quite heavy. So yeah pretty much all I did was add layer after layer of foil to the piece and I also used this to shape it as I went. Next I added the clay layer, so I used mostly scrap clay for this part because I knew that in the end it wasn't going to be visible anyway and it was also a good chance for me to use up some of my scrap clay that I wouldn't usually on other projects. So all I did was use my roller to roll out a few large sheets and then I stuck them down onto the foil base using liquid clay. This one is Sculpey Bacon Bond and this just makes sure that the clay doesn't pull away from the foil both before and after baking. After I added the clay on the areas I wanted the grass to be, I then added a tan colour to the base of the stream and pond so that when I added my sand on later, there wouldn't be any crazy rainbow colours uh, peering through. So next I started on the trees which I used a darker brown colour for and I began by firstly shaping the trunk and then using my fingers to pinch out some of the roots at the base of the tree. So here I'm just picturing where I want it to sit on the base and then I'm going to secure it with a piece of metal wire which I think was a scrap piece from an eye pin that I had in my craft box. I secured the wire into the tree using Bacon Bond liquid clay and made a hole in the base using my needle tool which I can then add the tree to. And this pretty much just helps keep the tree nice and stable and properly stuck into the base. I then used some more brown clay to add some extra roots on and then textured the tree using a dotting tool for larger bark details and then my needle tool for some smaller details. I then just continued to add more and more trees until I was happy with the amount. I wanted enough that it looked like a nice lush forest, but not too many that it was like way too overcrowded. On some of the trees I also added some branches coming out from the trunk and I secured these using wire and liquid clay again and then of course textured and blended them on. I planned the treetops to have foil inside like the base so that they weren't as heavy and don't use up as much clay. So here I'm just kind of working out how big I want them to be and then I added a hole in the top of each tree where I will secure a toothpick later on. I also added a few dead trees to the scene and used a lighter shade of brown for those ones. Next I made the tree stump. So I shaped some dark brown clay and hollowed out the top using my ball tool. I took some tan clay and added it into the space that I just made. 
I used a dotting tool to add the texture and used a round kind of motion and then I added the stump to the figure using bacon bond to secure it. Then just like the trees I created some roots which I textured and blended on and then finally I shaded the top part with some brown chalk pastels and a brush just to bring out the texture and make it look more realistic. Next I began adding some of the smaller details, so I used Granite Clay by Primo to make some rocks and little pebbles which I scattered around the scene. Next I mix various natural looking colours with my clay to make a bunch of little reeds and patches of long grass I guess. So for these I just rolled out the clay, flattened them down and I also twisted some of them slightly. I then grouped them together and then cut off the base using my blade so that they would stand upright and then I secured them to the scene using liquid clay. I then made a whole bunch of little red mushrooms in varying sizes and scattered them around the scene. I didn't add any polka dots to them because I planned on doing it later using some white acrylic paint. I also just noticed that in this part of the video I must have done some parts off camera so apparently I added some green clay as moss to the dead trees and also wrapped some coils of green clay around the trees as vines. At this point I went back to making the treetops, so like I said I rolled up some different sizes and shapes of foil, but I wanted to add something extra so they weren't literally just a ball of foil that could easily be squished and ruined. So I decided to bring the scrap clay back out and I cut two strips for each tree which I wrapped around the foil going in both directions, mainly so that the treetops would have some kind of structure to them. I then positioned a toothpick in each one and then set them aside. At this point I did my first bake of the scene, so I placed it on a baking tray and put it in the oven for around half an hour or so. I don't remember the exact time but I would say it would be about that. So once the piece had been baked I began to add the treetops. I took each toothpick and placed it into the tree that I was working on. I then measured how long I wanted it to be because obviously I didn't want it going all the way through the treetop and poking out the top. So I trimmed it off with my scissors and then slid the foil tree on where I pierced it with the toothpick before. Like always to help keep everything very secure, especially when there are other materials involved like foil, um, I used some more liquid clay. I then repeated these steps until all the tree trunks had tops and then went ahead and baked the whole scene again maybe for like one and a half to two hours because this was the final time I was baking the whole scene. The previous time I baked it I only did it a shorter time because I wanted to add the treetops while the trunks were hard otherwise they might have bent over or something like while they were soft. So that's the good thing about polymer clay because it can be baked over and over again. Also for anyone who may be unsure, everything on this piece is safe to bake and it won't get ruined in the oven, so this includes the foil, the wire and the toothpicks, as well as the clay of course. <laughs> After it had been baked, I then decided to use green acrylic paint to paint the treetops and the grass layer that was made using scrap clay so that in case when I added the grassy material, the colours wouldn't be visible because it would be green underneath instead. The next thing I did was add the natural textures using this foliage cluster material which is designed for making miniatures, so I guess what I'm kind of doing. For anyone in Australia who was wondering, I found this pack at Riot Art and Craft, but if you live overseas maybe try looking in the miniature kind of section in your craft store. So I was originally going to use PVA glue to attach it on, but it didn't dry quick enough and everything kept falling off, so I ended up using a hot glue gun which worked really well and of course dried a lot quicker. I took the foliage cluster which was just like one big chunk in the packet and I separated it into little patches which I then covered each treetop in. 
Next, I added the grass and I used this green grass turf, which I found in the same place as the foliage, again designed for making miniatures. This stuff has a different texture and was much more flaky, so I used a brush to paint the base of the scene with PVA glue and then sprinkled and pushed on the grass. I worked in sections for this and used more than I needed to make sure that all the areas were covered and then when the glue had dried, I tapped off all the excess grass. I then added the sand to the little stream and pond and I used this polymer clay sand that I made in a tutorial once so I'll leave it linked down below. It's also the same sand that I used on the base of my tropical beach figurine. Again I coated the scene with a layer of glue and sprinkled off the sand tapping off any excess once the glue had dried. When I was purchasing the other grass turf, I also got this more browny earth coloured one because I wasn't sure at the time what I wanted to use, so I decided to glue some of this coloured grass more around the bank of the stream and pond, as well as a few other patches in other areas. Then I didn't show it on camera because I made them all at different times but I also made a range of different forest animals and figures to decorate the scene with and give it some more life and more of a kawaii look. I ended up making a bunny, some squirrels uh, with different poses, a frog, some lily pads, a gnome, a butterfly, a nest of eggs, flowers and some fish. I also made a little guitar because Steven mentioned it might be nice to add a musical kind of element to the figurine, seeing as that's what the piece was being made for. I then attached all these characters and pieces using super glue. And finally the last detail I had to add was the water which I did using resin. So I mixed the two parts together and slowly poured it into the space that I had left. I popped any bubbles that came to the surface by blowing through a straw. And when the resin was super tacky but hadn't completely cured, I added the frog and the lily pads to the pond. I didn't show it on camera but for the little stream that's at the back of the piece I used UV resin for the water because it dried much quicker and saved me from having to monitor it constantly and prevent it from running off the base. Once the entire scene was finished, it was then time to photograph it for the album art. So I did this outside using natural lighting in front of my garden so it had that foresty look that Stephen was going for. I put my camera on my tripod and photographed the piece from a range of different angles with different focus points so Stephen could choose which he liked the best and which one he wanted to use. The natural lighting actually turned out really nice for the photos as well because I did it in the shade of a smaller bush so some of the sunlight shone through it and made it look like the sun was shining through the trees on my scene and onto the forest floor. So after I sent through the photos, Stephen then chose what he wanted to use, although we couldn't decide on a font for the title because we didn't want something that blended in too much, but also something that wasn't too bold that it took away from the album art itself. So what I did in the end was make some separate clay letters using the Primo granite clay and added some little patches of moss to some of them. Stephen then added everything together added a drop shadow and then the final album cover was finished. So we're both really happy with how it looks and it's really cool to see a creation that I handmade up on iTunes. Overall I made this scene on and off for a few months because I was busy with all my uni work at the time so I just did bits and pieces at a time and luckily Stephen had given me lots of notice before the planned release date. One other thing I did was also make a few separate figures and then photograph them in front of a white background so that Stephen could create some different edits for advertising and such, uh, like this one for example. So that is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of me making one of my more larger creations because it's quite a bit different compared to a normal charm I would usually show you. Please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more crafty videos, check out the description box below and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys!